So uh, this is a chapter 16 overview. Uh, let me just uh, uh, talk through each of the sections a little bit. Big chunk of chapter 16, it is optional, uh, not because they are not important, they are super important, but uh, mainly because of where they fall in in our semester. You know, it, it's, uh, it's kind of a shame <laughs> that most of it has to be optional because of the timing constraint, because this is really the, uh, the crowning mom moment. You've been studying electricity and you've been studying magnetism this semester, and you've been studying some connection between electricity and magnetism and the crowning moment where electricity and magnetism gets unified into one phenomenon, electromagnetic waves, it's all right here. Uh, but you know, it, it just uh, because of the sequencing, it comes at the end of the semester, so it's a big chunk of it is optional. What I would uh, ask you to look at in some detail is the introduction of something called the displacement current. This is um, really the final missing piece in our coverage of the laws of electromagnetism. So um, we have lecture that very closely models um, this situation that, uh, that Maxwell was considering and that led to the realization that when you look at Ampere's law, that Ampere's law has a missing term. Uh, this is a kind of a remarkable thing. Um, you might have heard of this saying, I, I don't know, it's a popular saying, so I think you might have heard it, something along the line of, you can't prove a negative. And <laughs> there are people who go around saying that, like, it's true just because you can say it. Um, and then, you know, most of the times, yeah, it, it's true. It's uh, kind of harder to prove uh, a negative. That's why our criminal justice system is built on the prosecutors having to prove that you are guilty as opposed to the accused person having to prove that they are innocent. Um, now, that's uh, just uh, everyday life. And this is physics, science. There are ways to prove a negative in science. And uh, proving a negative is harder. So if you want to prove um, uh, prove or demonstrate a, a positive phenomena, something that happens, then all you have to do is find that it happens and demonstrate it. That's it. Uh, for you to show that, um, for you to show that uh, something is wrong or um, something cannot happen, that's where you need an entire system of theory because it's when you have entire system of theory that you can spot the missing pieces. And this is an example of that. So you have Ampere's law and we have detailed enough of a theory of electromagnetism at this point that we can see that there's a logical contradiction here. We are considering this Amperean loop there's an ambiguity in what exact surface you pick. And, um, and you could give an argument in most cases how that ambiguity doesn't matter. And Maxwell was able to come up with a situation where that ambiguity does matter. And in considering this situation, he was able to figure out what, that, uh, what the form of that missing term must be. And that form of the missing term which kind of plays the same role that current plays in. That's what we call displacement current. And if you watch the lecture, you see me going through the uh, derivation. To It's not really a derivation so much as a guess, because you can't derive a fundamental laws of physics. You can only guess at it. You, maybe you have some inspiration. You have some um, motivation for a particular guess, but it's not technically, logically derivation. So, so this is the form of a displacement current. Once you introduce this and say that this is the full Ampere's law, then, then this situation no longer causes any contradiction. So, um, so that displacement current term, that's called the Maxwell term in Ampere's law, and that's the very final last piece of um, our system of uh, laws of electromagnetism. So, um, so, uh, so James Clerk Maxwell, he was a guy who came up with not the whole equation, just the one term, but because he's the one who finished it, um, we call the whole series of equations Maxwell's equations. And that's what you see presented here. Yeah, 
This is Maxwell's equations. <laughs> you might have seen this on a T-shirt. Um, maybe not this exact one, but the, the differential form. So in the lecture, I also give you the differential form because um, you should have been taking uh, Method 3C alongside of this class, unless you took it already. So around this time in the semester is when you, we can use uh, things like gradient, divergence, and curl, and they make some notational sense to you. So, uh, so this is uh, the law of Maxwell's equations that you've been working with. Gauss's law for electromagnet electricity. Uh, there's also Gauss's law for magnetism, but we haven't been using it because um, you know there's no magnetic charge, <laughs> so it's just zero. But it does uh, in, impose some constraints on properties of magnetic field. And uh, we covered Ampere's law first uh, without the Maxwell term, and now we are capping it off with the Maxwell term, and we covered the Faraday's law. And um, yeah, so that's uh, this is really the uh, this is the culmination of this semester. Um, we do these five equations, um, the four equations which describes how the fields are generated, and the one equation which describes how those fields interact with the matter. Uh, we have all of electricity and magnetism here. Um, everything else is just application. So. Um, so yeah, that's uh, Maxwell's equations, and this, these are the kind of English word description. This is the kind of the description I would give in physics 10, because I'm not allowed to use these calculation notations in physics 10. But I, I, I do think there's a great value in people understanding what stories that these equations are saying. And that's uh, uh, summarized here with uh, uh, one for each of the four equations. So. So once you have Maxwell's equations, um, there are things you can do. And uh, as a kind of an optional coverage, what we end with in the lectures is the derivation of the wave equation for electromagnetic wave. And your textbook gives a very good description of uh, in a conceptual picture how that might be occurring. So you know if you have an alternating current, that alternating current is creating a magnetic field that will be uh, flipping. It will be flipping direction, changing direction. Now, before Maxwell term, we might get as far as um, guess, uh, deducing that there's an electric field that's produced by the changing magnetic field, changing magnetic flux. Now, without the Maxwell term, that's where you would end. Because uh, without the Maxwell term, changing electric fields uh, didn't do anything before the Maxwell term. Now, with the Maxwell term, this changing electric field can it itself generate changing magnetic field, which again produces changing electric field, which again produces changing magnetic field. So there's a whole chain of events that can now happen. And this is the conceptual description of electromagnetic wave. Now, uh, for derivation of properties of this electromagnetic wave, um, which, by the way, was experimentally observed um, by this guy named the Hertz uh, after Maxwell's death, I think. Um, so, uh, as uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, um, to to derive the properties of electromagnetic wave, you need quite a bit of calculus. So, your textbook takes one um, approach that. I didn't because in the lecture because um, I find it <laughs> very tedious. But I do think it's good for you to uh, try to follow the argument presented in your textbook. It's a way of thinking through it. Uh, uh, you know, it is <laughs> tedious. It takes a lot of effort. Take your time, read it through it. I do highly recommend it. Um, for the lecture, you will see me just uh, using um, the differential form of Maxwell's equations and doing calculus uh, that way to arrive at the same goal. Really, our end goal is to come up with a wave equation, which you uh, should have seen in physics 4a. Um, and th this is the, the when not this. Um, this is the form of a wave equation. So um, wave equation, uh, at least the one version of it, has this form. You have a function of position and time, and uh, wave equation relates um, the, the partial derivative with respect to position and time in this way. Double, time deriv double position derivative is equal 
it's proportional to the double time derivative. And this constant of proportionality, there's a very direct relationship between this coefficient and the wave speed. This coefficient here is equal to uh, the reciprocal of wave speed squared. And that's the remarkable thing that Maxwell discovered as he, um, uh, as he worked with the equations that are named after him, that uh, he derived the speed of, uh, speed of light, or he derived the speed of electromagnetic waves, which at the time when Maxwell derived it, no one fully knew what it was. Uh, it, with respect to light, there uh, used to be debate that got settled maybe a couple decades before Maxwell um, worked all this out. Uh, so uh, there was a debate about the nature of light and uh, that debate got settled as uh, light is wave, <laughs> um, optical physics for say, light is wave, but no one knew really what kind of waves because light wave is a very strange wave that can apparently propagate through a vacuum. And, and this is the thing that answers the question. Um, when he derived this wave speed of electromagnetic wave and Maxwell knew values of these constants, they're determined in electrostatic and magnetostatic experiments and he plugged in the numbers and he got a number so high that it could be only one thing. It, it's a high number that's very close to the speed of light that's been measured through other means like uh, astronomical observations. So, um, so uh, Maxwell correctly deduced that um, the electromagnetic wave whose existence he's uh, figuring out is light waves. And uh, he didn't, so the experiment that was done by Hertz, um, again, that was done after Maxwell died. So uh, he wouldn't uh, live to see his prediction fulfilled, but uh, you know, it, 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 it's, um, this is the really the key discovery that's made out of um, Maxwell's work with the Maxwell's equations. So there are other uh, properties of electromagnetic wave, like how electric fields and magnetic fields in an electromagnetic wave are related. Um, and uh, you know, right through that, <laughs> there's a really um, remarkable thing. Uh, the electric field cross product with the magnetic field that gives the direction of propagation. That's what this diagram is showing. And I do lecture on it, you can watch that. And as we are talking about the, um, the electromagnetic waves, one quantity um, contains a lot of information about electromagnetic waves, which is, um, which is the pointing vector. It's a vector that's defined this way. Pointing vector um, does uh, two things. <laughs> One, it tells you in what direction the the propagation direction is pointing, you know, with the eye. I think this is, is named after some guy. Um, so uh, um, po pointing vector with a Y does tell you in what direction the wave is pointing. Okay, I'll stop doing the pun. Um, so th that's one. And the magnitude of the pointing vector relates to the amount of energy transfer uh, and or momentum. Um, there's a specific way it's related. You can, you should read it through it. Um, it uh, yeah, but I guess it's all very optional. <laughs> and um, and it's, it's section 16.4 is related to 16.3 from a bit of a different angle. Um, and actually um, there have been successful uh, a solar sail spacecrafts out there. I don't know if they describe it here. There's a mission called the Icarus by, um, uh, there's a, a mission by a Japanese uh, space um, thing. Is Icarus not even here? Um, well, um, well. Um, look up Icarus, spelled it this way. Uh, they uh, did a, a, a kind of proof of concept demonstration of solar sail. Um, and the electromagnetic spectrum, this, uh, uh, I think we talk about this in physics 10, uh, kind of conceptual description of physics. And this will, will be your starting point um, in physics 4C as we do optics. So when we do optics, a lot of that we spend it on visible light. Um, but um, for in preparation for the other parts of modern physics that we'll be covering, uh, understanding kind of what separates uh, 
uh, radio waves from ultraviolet X-rays. That's uh, kind of remarkable because at their very fundamental nature, they are all same thing. They are all electromagnetic wave. They are all oscillating electric and magnetic fields. Then depending on their um, frequency or wavelength, they exhibit very different uh, properties. So, uh, so hopefully a lot of this uh, looks familiar, but you know, it, it, if uh, you haven't seen this in your previous science class, that's why this section is here, so that you can get caught up to date and <laughs> just uh, um, be able to know the things you should know as you're going to Physics 4C.